<laughs> Couldn't you imagine going to church on a Sunday morning? You know, kind of like all formal, you know, you've got, just a, let's just say you're going to a shirt and tie or whatever affair, you know, and, and you got this formal church and everybody's all decked out and dressed up and then suddenly the pastor walks up, gets ready to read the ass, and goes, <laughs> <laughs> no? Oh, well. You know, that's kind of sometimes what I think that some people really need to get a grip on. You know, it's like they get too carried away about what they're carried away about. Of course, that makes sense because they're carried away about it. Aren't they? I mean, I'll give you an example. It's kind of like, you know, I'll, I'll be talking or visiting or, you know, posting things on the Internet or doing video ministry, you know, and then suddenly, you know, someone will... You know, comment on something, you know, and they'll say, no, nah, that's not true. Or say false or whatever. And they'll go way off the deep end. Overreact. Get carried away. There's that word again. Carried away. With their emotions. And rather than stop. You know, first rule of any emergency responder is stop, look, listen, evaluate the circumstances. Then make a plan of action and work accordingly. Because... It used to be that you automatically, you know, rescue people out of whatever the situation was, and they die doing it. <laughs> to put it bluntly, they would run into a fire, and not be prepared. So, first responders are taught a different way of looking at it. You have to evaluate, you know, the circumstances of what is the best way to proceed. You know, because obviously, if you're jeopardizing your life and you're the only one there, and there's other people in jeopardy. That's stupid. <laughs> you may think you're rescuing one life and die in the process and kill everyone else off too. In other words, you need to evaluate what's going on really as opposed to what you immediately see right in front of you. So running up to a burning building isn't always the best thing to do. Running up to a burning car that's about to blow up isn't always the best thing to do. Although it looks like in television, you know, you can dive in and rescue the person, you know, and yank them out. Well, I don't know if you've ever seen this happen because they don't show it on TV too often, but if somebody's got a spinal cord injury and you yank them out, they're going to drop dead, bluntly, because you just severed the rest of whatever was left of their spine. Pardon me, but that's not a wise thing to do. So you see, you have to have the training in order to be a first responder. You have to have some discipline in order to evaluate the circumstances that you're faced with. The same thing is true spiritually. Someone can come up to you and say, false, like I do a lot. Well, okay, maybe not a lot. I was going to say, I actually don't do it that often. You know, I mean, a lot of people kind of, you know, pretty much take their time, look on the Internet, and they can study and find themselves approved unto God, a workman need not be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth, because they can compare pastors with pastors and messages with messages and the Bible with Bible and pretty much come up with what God is teaching them according to their faith and relationship with Him. So they can use information tools in order to learn information. They discover and uncover for themselves what their faith is all about, what their relationship with God really is. They can do it themselves, bluntly. All it takes really is an internet connection, or to put it bluntly, in the old days, you know, we could do the hardwire regime and just simply, dare I say, open a Bible. <laughs> I know that's so passe now, or blasé, but old school, you know, you carried a Bible around and just looked it up. Huh. Nowadays, you just carry an iPad or, you know, a little wonder phone, you know, and do your thing and, you know, act like you're a genius. <laughs> no offense, but, you know, some people think I'm a genius. And that just blows my mind. It cracks me up. They go, man, that guy always has the right scripture at the right time for the right purpose, for the right thing, for the right thing to say. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't. The truth is, I ask God to inspire me, where can I find it? So, boom, I'll either quickly do a immediate, open up another window and search on Google, you know, for the scripture reference, and, you know, kind of like find some commentary and see if that, you know, is accurate or not. Or God will inspire me with flipping open a Bible or looking up the Bible, you know, according to, you know, where he wants me to see it and then evaluate it in circumstances and being trained in it as those first responders I talked to you about, about saying how they need to be trained in order to be disciplined, in order to know what to do, so that they would evaluate circumstances first. <sighs> yes, that's what I do. So by the time somebody comes back at me, you know, saying, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, you know, and gets all in a huff and a cuff and a puff and they want to blow my house down, 
I'm sorry, <laughs> but I already did the research, you know. You should have before you posted it, you know. I mean, it's kind of like, let's get real for a minute. You don't need to take it so serious that you get caught up or caught away with what you're doing. In fact, what I do when someone says false or no or, you know, tells me I'm wrong, I go, okay, and I read what they have to say. One of the things I do a lot, which, you know, my wife is just amazed by, you know, only she probably doesn't believe it as much as I do it, is that she'll say something, and by the end of the day, I've already thought about it, considered it, prayed about it, you know, kind of looked at it from her point of view, looked at it from my point of view, prayed about it from God's point of view, and then tried to come up with some kind of meaning for it for me, and then applied it to my life, and then somehow you know, deal with it, and then come back to her. By that time, she's forgotten whatever it was that she said. <laughs> I guess it wasn't that important to her. For me, it's like, hey, it might have been the voice of God, so I pay attention. So I'm kind of more serious about what you say, you know, on the internet or however you contact me, than you are. I look at it. I pray about it. I think about it. I go to Google it, you know. I, I go to the Holy Spirit. I ask God, to, hey, are you trying to talk to me? Are you telling me something? You know, did God say that? Did you say that? Where did it come from? So I really kind of evaluate, because I'm trained that way. I'm trained to examine the truth, to prove all things and hold fast that which is good. Now the way I don't get carried away with it is that I take it with a grain of salt, so to speak, but really what I do is I take it with a sense of humor. I think it's funny. No, really, I do. I think it's hilarious some of the dumb things people say. I mean. To put it bluntly, once you know the truth, I don't know how people get so whacked out on what they're whacked out about. You know? Sometimes they just don't know how to look at things. Sometimes they don't see what's really going on. That's why I brought my ink and blinking and not out. Oh wait, that's only inking and blinking. That's these two guys that are looking over, you know, kind of watching to make sure that you got it right. <laughs> No, they aren't. But I'm sure that's what some people think. That's why I kind of like these guys. You know, it's like they always kind of remind me about life in general. You want to know what my motto on life is? Want to have some fun? That's it. Let's have some fun. I mean, you know, sometimes I think that Christians think the only fun is getting into other things like you know, skiing and snorkeling and scuba diving and jet skiing and doing all these things, you know, that Sure, for some people that's fun. But you know what I have fun in? Believe it or not, I enjoy the Word of God. I enjoy the Bible. Matter of fact, I love talking about scriptures, how they work together, how they complement each other, how they're perfect in the way that they're imperfect, how they complete the picture of who Jesus is, how they reveal so obviously the truth of how we should live our lives, how Proverbs is so perfect in order to live your life by, you know, and how the Ten Commandments really aren't all so smart when you try to live them. You know, it's like, huh, right, good luck. But proverbial speaking, you know, it's like, whoa, it sure reveals man's human nature pretty much. So I'm always fascinated by the Word of God. And for me, it's like, let's have some fun. Let's check into it. Well, frankly, if you're one of those people that got carried away with what I might say, and you didn't read where I'm coming from, you probably think that I'm, Ooh, thou shalt not, or hypercritical, or, you know, hypercriticism, or, you know, getting my hermeneutic into your homiletic so that you can get confused by your homiletic. <laughs> uh, not really, because you're very eclectic. I'm very eclectic. I actually just do as God tells me to do. I'd rather follow a little voice in my ear telling me go to the left, right, or sideways, stand still, or do whatever, than I would listening to what people say. So I like to really find out, you know, what what's Jesus do with you? How's God talk to you? How do you relate to Jesus? How do you spe how do you spell wisdom? How do you spell relief? How do you enjoy the word of God? Most people I meet don't enjoy it. They dictate it, they preach it, they talk it, they walk it, they do all these other things. But I don't think they enjoy it much cuz they don't look very happy about it. You know? They don't seem to have too much enjoyment about it. They seem to always be like, you know, ooh, 
look what's going to happen. Or, whoa, look what you've done. Or, ooh, ah, you better do this. Or, oh no, you didn't do that. Oh my God, you're going to do this? You know, I'm more like, hey, you know, you want to go to heaven? Here's how. You want to go to hell? Go there. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> Frankly, go to heaven or go to hell. I don't care. <laughs> it's your choice. <laughs> you know, you get to choose. Hey, one way you win, the other way you lose. <laughs> I mean, come on. How simple does that get? <laughs> Frankly, <laughs> uh, not very hard to figure out at all, in my mind. So, I don't have this big issue with, you know, all these other circumstances. I think it's pretty clear when you just simply sit down, talk to God, and say, hey, you know, this Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, I don't know about it, but it says that, you know, I can trust you with all my heart, you know, and that, you know, my heart's really deceitful, wickedly made, and it leads me all kinds of different ways, and, you know, I think I love, you know, McDonald's the same way I love my wife, or I love my dog, and frankly, I think that's an insult to somebody, but I'm not sure which one first. <laughs> Maybe it's an insult to all of them. Or that I love God the same way I love what? <laughs> Ooh, don't fill that one in. You might be in trouble. So sometimes, you know, I think some of these things get really weirded and whacked out when people get weirded and carried away because they're not carried away by God's grace and mercy or the Spirit of God who wants to give you peace, who wants to give you love, who wants to give you joy. Matter of fact, I think sometimes even getting carried away in peace sometimes makes some people a little weird. Sometimes people getting carried away in joy makes them really weird. Have you ever heard those dog barkers? You know, those people that are like running around on their fours, you know, acting like that's kind of a move of the spirit. Or the thing that really drives me crazy, you know, I mean, I, I, like I said, I laugh about this. But in this way, it's not that funny, but it's sort of funny. <laughs> uh, uh oh. Is that when they say, I command? You know, I'm amazed at the egotism of anyone that could stand up and say, I command in the name of Jesus, or I command this, I command you, Satan, I command you, devil, I command you. You know what I think? I think Satan laughs at you. As soon as you go, I command, he goes, okay, sure, and he backs up and you walk forward and, and fall into the pit. <laughs> yeah, he disappeared, all right, because you went falling down. <laughs> uh, not exactly the wisest thing you could do. I think that, you know, when you leave it in the Lord's hands, the Lord takes care of it. He hedges you about. He protects you. I think Elisha had it, really, the sum total of the Christian life. He said, first of all, he wanted double what Elijah had. Hey, I want to look at some of these mega, mega saints and say, I want triple what they got or quadruple. You know, I don't want to strike the rock once, twice, or three times. I want to hit it more and more. You know, kind of like you heard that Bible study, right? took the arrows, beat them on the ground twice, and said, you should have beat them more. Well, I want twice as much and more if anybody else has got. And you know what's even weirder? I want you to have even more than I got. I want you to hear God like in mega conversations. You know, you want to stop the texting for a while? Good. Listen to God. He'll text. <laughs> Believe me, he's done it already. But the point is, when you really want and enjoy God to that degree, then you're not a dog barker, you know, and you're not a I will walker, you know, talker, you know, or I command talker, you know. You're more of a like, Lord, what do you want? God, what's your will? Jesus, what do you have to say today? Then you kind of enjoy that which comes your way because you can trust in him, like Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, because you know your heart deceives you. And then the next part really just blows my mind because it gives everybody the way that they should live their life. Lean not in your own understanding. My God, how simple is that? I like not leaning in my own understanding because you know what? I'm a pretty intelligent person. I didn't say wise, but I'm pretty intelligent. I can see through all the crap that people throw at me. Oops, did I say crap? Well, let me call it BS sometimes because that's what a lot of people do out there. They put this smoke screen up and they call themselves Christian or not Christian or whatever, politician or, you know, smoke screen in business, you know, the CEO or the CFO or whatever it may be. And then you find out when you investigate them, they're not a very nice person after all. As a matter of fact, sometimes you investigate them and you find out that they were ripping off the company. That's not much of a CEO or CFO or whatever it may be. You find out that human nature isn't all it's cracked up to be. As a matter of fact, the Bible says human nature is corrupt and evil and deceitful and wicked and perverse above all things, like your heart. 
So I kind of like not leaning on my own understanding because according to what my understanding is, man, them little babies, you know, they're innocent little children. You know, they got no bad habits. Have you ever seen two babies in a crib? One socks the other in the nose. <laughs> Give me my bottle, bam! <laughs> it ain't no none of this like, hey, here, take my bottle, it's yours. Not when they're hungry, sorry. <laughs> the human nature comes out real fast. Me, mine first, I, I, I. That's nature, that's natural. But the interesting thing is that when you don't lean in your own understanding and you do trust in the Lord, then in all your ways, if you'll acknowledge him, he'll direct your path. And you know, I kind of like my having my path directed because I really stuck my foot in it a few times. You know, I walked along on the sidewalk and stepped in dog, you know, whatever. <laughs> Not so much in Sacramento because everybody walks around with these little baggies, you know, reverse baggy, you know, thing. You know, you know the reverse baggy routine. You know, you carry a bag, you stick your hand through it, you pick up the poop. Ooh. Only your hand's in a bag. And then you just kind of pull it back out, you know, and it's like the poop's in the bag and your hand's not. Nice! Then you tie it up, you know, and you carry it around for you. <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> well, anyways, it works. Because <laughs> I don't step in poop in Sacramento. But let me tell you, when I was living everywhere else in the country, somewhere at some point in time, I'd stick my foot in it. And that's kind of what it's like when your life is not directed by God. You'll stick your foot in it because you're not paying attention to where you're going. Matter of fact, sometimes you'll be paying attention to where you're going, and if it's just a field full of poop, guess what? You can't get around it. That's what the world is. It really is a field full of poop, and unless you learn how to walk on poop, guess what? You're going to get stuck in it. Well, maybe God doesn't want you walking. He wants you standing still. Maybe he doesn't want you in that field of poop, but he wants you in a field of dreams. Maybe he wants you someplace else, and that's why acknowledging him allows him to direct your path in a better way than what you've been going. Now, like I said, most people I know, they're really carried away by their emotions. They're really carried away by their own sense of sensibilities. They're really carried away with their own issues, whether it be political or financial or emotional or relationships, you know, like they go through a divorce or they go through a marriage, you know, and they go, oh, I'll never love again. Guess what? Give them two years, they'll be in love again. Or three or four. If they're in their 20s, it could take six months, it could take two, two weeks, you know, I mean, to put it bluntly. For some reason, the younger you are, the more you fall in love. <laughs> over and over and over again. But the point is, when you're carried away with that you're not carried by the Spirit of God. You see, you could be carried by the Spirit of God the same way that if you were a big hot air balloon and you just filled it full of hot air and let it go, it goes up and then it's carried away by the wind. And whichever way the wind blows, that's where that balloon will go because it doesn't have the ability to control its own motion. As a matter of fact, that hot air balloon is very fragile. If you puncture it, it's going to come poof, down fast. That's what you're like. Believe it or not, you're puncturable. You could be punctured through. And quite frankly, when people are carried away with their motion, that's what happens. They get their little ego punctured and they come poof, flapping down off of where they were in the heights with God carried by the winds of the spirit so to speak and way up high looking at the point of view from his perspective where you don't see everybody's faults and you're enjoying the goodness of God and the clean air and the bright sunshine and just going wow look how beautiful it is up here until somebody <laughs> punctures your hot air balloon well you don't have to be punctured as a matter of fact you could probably get a sense of humor about it and once you do, I think you'll find that your life can be a lot more enjoyable than it is. Don't react to things that happen in your life. Rather, give them to God. Say, okay, God, you know, I got offended. You got it. Okay, God, this person is an idiot. You take care of them. God, this country's messed up. You take care of it. God, this is that, the, the, this, that, and the other thing. God, you take care of it. And you know what? People say, I'm irresponsible for asking God to do it. Really? Huh. Okay. <laughs>
Call me irresponsible. Call me unreliable. Call me undeniably faithful. <laughs> I mean, hey, if you can't trust God, who are you going to trust? The government? <laughs> oh, I got a better one. Trust your company. They're going to give you your retirement. Yeah, right. Most people realized very quickly that they can't afford to pay you your retirement, so guess what they're doing? Laying off all the old riffraff. You know, cutting the old wood. That was the old expression. Cut the old wood out so you don't have to pay retirement. You know, make them take early outs and quick outs so that the retirement doesn't pay more than what they're earning. Because that's where the economy is right now, is that people can't, companies, afford, including the government, to pay people to retire. Because it costs them twice as much for retirement than it does for what they're pulling in money-wise. Oops! Somebody boo-booed. Supposed to keep working or die in the process. They didn't die. They lived long enough to get their retirement. Oh my God, now what do we do? You see, that's what happens in the world and its ways. But when you trust in the Lord, you can rejoice in God for what He's doing because your retirement isn't on earth. It's in heaven. You're not so carried away but one day you will be carried to the bosom of God. You'll be carried home to be with Him. You'll be carried up into the heavens to be with Jesus forevermore because He's gone to prepare a place for you. And that where He is, you will be one day because He's promised to take you there. So you really don't have to get carried away by what's happening around you, but rather, it might be kind of nice if you got carried away with the Word of God instead and kind of like, you know, enjoyed it for a change, maybe employed it in your life, maybe, you know, didn't react to it so much as you act upon it, act with it, or even act like you ooh, heard it being spoken to you. That's what I do. And I don't know what to do. I ain't doing nothing until I hear from God and what He would say. But in the meantime, if I could give you one thing to be inspired by. One thing to think about. One thing to meditate on. Just remember how obnoxious that can be. Because <laughs> guess what? You may find me knocking on your posting or Facebook page. Well, not on your page, but on the news feed. Commenting on false, wrong, no, yes. Ooh, good job. Praise the Lord. You see, the Bible does say, be wary of those who compliment you, but thank those who rebuke you. Thank a wise man who, or rebuke a wise man, he will be wiser still. Compliment a wise man, he fall into a pit of foolishness. You see, it's not really about the compliments that count. It's those people that are really kind of like questioning what you're saying that you might want to listen to. Kind of like I listen to my wife. I don't always do what she says, but I do listen, and I do think about it the same way I do about what my God says to me. And believe me, I don't always do what he says either, but I try.